Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with complex numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel that focuses on algebra, number theory and trigonometry, tiny bit of geometry, but mainly for real numbers. You can check it out. It's called cyber math, cyber with an S. Great, now we have this equation, 4 to the power z plus 9 to the power z equals 6 to the power z, and we're going to be solving for z values. What else could you solve for, right? So to solve for z, obviously, this is an exponential equation. Can we use logarithms? A lot of times when people see exponential equations like this one, which means the variable is in the exponent, they try to log both sides. And which log would you use? You can use log base 10, log base e, which is the natural log, or natural logarithm, or ln, or sometimes they'll use whatever the number is, right? In this case, because we have 6 on the right-hand side, you could also use log base 6. But I'm going to just keep it simple and just use ln on both sides, right? Let's do that. ln 4 to the power z plus 9 to the power z equals ln 6 to the power z. All good, right? Check the right-hand side. You can go ahead and bring the z over. That's the cool part about logging both sides. Uh, anyways, this will work, but ln is more uh, common. And sometimes, unfortunately, textbooks and some professors use log or log for natural log, which is kind of unfortunate, but anyways, what can you do about it? So good things happen on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, it's not good. Why? Because we have the log of, or ln, of a sum, which doesn't really turn into anything. If you had the ln of a product, like ln AB, that, will, that could be written as ln A plus ln B. Or if you had a quotient, you could also write it as ln A minus ln B. So these are good things, and with the power property, we already talked about it, right? So those are basically the main properties that you, you need to know for lns. You can apply these, but we have a sum, and the log is not going to act on the sum, right? So what are we going to do? We can't use logs. That's what it means. So let's rewrite the problem and look for a different way to approach it. Now, you could also, another method that you could try is, you could guess and check, like can z be 0? Can z be 1? Because sometimes we have a single solution, and that's so straightforward, or maybe I should say uh, look for trivial solutions first, right? Such as 0 or 1 or negative 1. But none of these work here. You can test it out. So we're kind of stuck here, right? But don't worry. Houston, we have a solution. So to solve this problem, we're going to pay attention to one fact that I want you to be looking for with these kinds of problems all the time, okay? So if you can take any of these two numbers, I'm talking about the bases, by the way, and multiply them and square the other number, and if you get the same result, then you're in good shape. I'll tell you what to do next, okay? Let's check it out. For example, let's multiply 4 times 6. What is that? 24. What's the other number? 9. What is 9 squared? 81. Are they equal? No. This pair did not work. Let's try another pair. How about 9 and 6? 9 times 6 equals 54. What's the other number? 4. 4 squared is 16. Are they equal? No. And I'm doing this on purpose, obviously. The last one is the best. What is 4 times 9? 36. What is 6 squared? 36. Are they equal? Absolutely. I mean, really, they are equal. So, it works. So, what are you supposed to do then in this case, right? You look at the bases, and you don't have to do it this way, but I usually recommend using the largest base. So, let's go ahead and divide everything by 9 to the power z. That's the trick here. Once you check that, and remember, I'm not just like telling you do this all the time, but first do the check, and if that works, good then you can try the strategy, okay? You know how to identify those problems. And they come up a lot in math competitions and math olympiads. This is what this channel is all about, or these channels are all about. By the way, I also have a shorts channel. Check it out as well. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 9 to the power z. And then it's going to give us good things. First of all, since these two expressions have the same exponent, we can kind of write it as 4 over 9 to the power z. Obviously, this is going to be 1, and this is, going to be, this is going to be 6 over 9 to the power z. Obviously, 6 over 9 can be simplified. If they have a common factor, which is 3, divide by that, you get 2 thirds to the power z. Sorry, that's how I made my z, so they don't look like a 2. 
And then this side is going to be 4 over 9 to the power z plus 1. Great. Now, why is this a good thing to have, right? You might be asking, and I know some people are always going to ask for like, why did you do this? What is it good for? Now, take a look at the bases. 2 thirds and 4 ninths. Do you see what I see? Now, 4 ninths is 2 thirds squared. Let's write that down. So, this expression is actually because 4 ninths to the power z can be written as 2 thirds to the power, 2 to the power z, or 2z, or not 2z, <laughs> that's a problem. You could also write it like this, okay, because the exponents can be switched, they're multiplied, right? The commutative property, yeah, it's hard to say, but it's such, it's an important property. So we can write it like this. And once you rename this, like 2 thirds to the power z, how about calling that w? w also represents a complex number. Is z a complex number? Hopefully, right? Now, this gives you the following. w squared plus 1 equals w. Great. Now, what does this give us? A quadratic equation, which is easy to solve, right? You have a formula. You probably memorized it in maybe ninth grade, 10th grade. Depends. Some people even learn it in 8th grade. Good for them because you learn it early, early on. And I remember teaching it to some of my 6th graders that are preparing for math Olympiads, of course. So, let's put everything... Oops. Let's put everything on the same side, w squared minus w plus 1 equals 0. And this equation should be familiar to you if you're not new to complex numbers. What do you do if you're new to complex numbers? Check out the lecture videos. You know what to do. And also let me know what you think about this channel and my other channel, Cyber Math. Also check out the shorts. I usually publish a short once a week. Uh, I used to do more, but right now I'm kind of busy and I'm like, you know, I'll just give myself a break. Okay? You've probably seen my latest schedule. So, this equation is particularly important. Why? Because it gives us the cube roots of a very important number. The complex cube roots I'm talking about. When you say cube root of a real number, in the real sense, it's one. There's only one. But in the complex sense, there are three cube roots of any complex number, except for zero, of course, right? And this includes negative numbers. This includes uh, complex numbers like 1 plus i, so on and so forth, right? And you can find them. Now, why are these the cube roots? Okay, so here's what we can do. One way to approach this problem is multiply both sides by w plus 1. Taking advantage, oops, I don't like that h situation when I write what w plus 1 like that. Okay, great. So if you multiply both sides by w plus 1, what's going to happen is from sum of two cubes on the left-hand side, you're going to get w cubed plus 1. And you can also distribute and find the same thing, but this is just a shortcut. 0 will stay. Now, notice that we can isolate w cubed. That gives us negative 1. This means w is the cube root of negative 1, or the cube roots. And there are three cube roots of 1, right? I'm sorry, the cube roots of negative 1. And obviously, one of them is negative 1, but you don't want that because by multiplying both sides by w plus 1, you kind of came up with a new equation that didn't exist before and you introduce a new solution, which is w equals negative 1, but that is not a solution of this equation. In other words, negative 1 we're not going to consider as the value of w. The other values, okay? But how do you find them? In the complex sense, you can basically do this. You can write uh, w cubed equals negative 1 as now negative 1 on the complex plane is going to look like this. Its distance from 0 is 1, and it makes an angle of pi radians with the uh, real axis, right? On the argon plane, that's how it's represented. So we can basically write it as e to the power i pi, right? But of course, that's not the only value. You can add multiples of 2 pi to this to get the general form. And this is important because when you try to raise both sides to the power 1 third to take the cube roots, you're going to get something like this. And with, with the value of n equals 0, you're going to get e to the power i pi over 3 with n equals 1. You're going to get uh, 3 pi over 3, which is pi, e to the i pi. And you don't want that because this is equal to negative 1, so you don't want that. And the third one is just going to be with n equals 2. You're going to get 4 pi, 5 pi over 3, so it's going to look like this. And what are they going to look like? For example, if you take that, uh, thanks to Euler, we have a formula. We can just write it as cosine pi over 3 plus i times sine pi over 3, right? And 
cosine pi over 3, as you know, cosine 60 is sine 30, which is 1 half, plus root 3 over 2 multiplied by i. Sometimes people will write it as a plus ib, but I write it as a plus bi. Why? Because it's the name of this channel, okay? a plus bi, in case you forgot. Great. Now, what do we do with this? Well, this is just one of the solutions, but it's a solution for w. What about the other w value? Let's take a look. It's just 5 pi over 3. And if you think about 5 pi over 3 and pi over 3, they add up to 2 pi. In other words, it's kind of like negative pi over 3. So what's going to happen is the cosine value is going to be the same. And I can kind of call these w1 and w2. Uh, but the sine value, so it's going to be negated or reflected, right, over the x-axis. And it's going to look like that. So those are the values for w. But guess what? w is not what we're looking for. w is just two-thirds to the power z. So this is what we need to do now. The next level is going to be two-thirds to the power z is equal to w, which I can write as one-half plus root three over two i. Okay, now I'm just going to do it for one of them, and hopefully you can repeat the same process because it's the same thing. Hopefully you can do that as well. It, this will be a good exercise for you. Okay, now what do we do from here? We can go ahead and natural log both sides. It's going to give us z times ln two-thirds. By the way, this is a real valued ln, but on the right-hand side, people like to write it as log, so I'm going to just follow that convention even though I don't like it. This, this is just a complex logarithm, okay? That's why I wrote it as log, but if you don't want to be confused or if that's confusing for you, I'm going to turn it into an ln. But that's what usually people use. They write it as a log, which means that is the complex logarithm, okay? So how do we find the logarithm of a complex number? We can basically uh, do the following. If you have like, let's think about it. Uh, let's say if z can be written as r times e to the power i theta, right? Then uh, this will be ln r plus i theta. So it's better if you can write it in the polar form. Instead of writing 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, let's go ahead and erase it and just write it in the polar form which will be the following. Remember, it, uh, its modulus was 1, right? So it's just going to be e to the power i times pi over 3. See, this is much, much better. So we can now write it with the ln as i times pi over 3. And now what we need to do is to find z, we need to divide both sides by ln 2 thirds. So it's going to look like this, i times pi over 3 divided by ln 2 thirds. In other words, this is an imaginary number that has no real parts. Uh, so it's going to be on the imaginary axis. Uh, you can also write it like this, pi over 3 ln 2 thirds, and then multiply by i. Of course, I did not consider uh, the other solutions like, obviously, this can be written as i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. If you replace this with that, you're going to get a more general solution. But I'm just going to leave it for you here at this point. This is one of the solutions, not all the solutions. Now, I don't know if I included the results from Wolfram Alpha. I think I did, or I forgot. Did I? Let's find out. Ta -da -da -da. Yes, I did not forget to do it. And you can see, in a more general form, of course, what they did here is they took log two-thirds and split it up. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and... Bye-bye.